Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Friday Facts Discussion, number 384, Combinators 2.0. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me for this one. Uh, we have some good stuff. So it is Combinator and Circuit related. Now, for anyone who's been around uh, my channel for a while knows this is definitely not my strong suit. Uh, this is uh, by far one of my weakest parts of the game, something I really never touch that much. Uh, but it looks like they are trying to make it a lot more approachable. So uh, basically, uh, Kovrex here, or Clone, and I'm not sure who wrote this part, but uh, they, they say, you know, they never really used Combinators uh, just because it was too much of a hassle most of the time, which is what it feels like for me, and then also, like a lot of it, I, I just do not understand uh, and can't seem to understand it, but, uh, you know, they say once they made these changes that, you know, they started using it way more often, and I think... For me, that may apply. For others, that may apply. For new players, this will definitely make it more approachable. Uh, so we're going to hop into the first part here, which is just circuit GUI rework. And this is very simple. Uh, they change how this works with what it shows initially. So they learned over the years that it's always better to use disabled enabled state on control elements, which can be turned on or off, compared to making them just disappear. So on the left, we have what is currently the case, where basically when you go to a combinator before you choose anything or hook anything up, you just get like a blank box, which gives you basically no information, you know, can make it very confusing, not helpful. Uh, but they've changed it now for 2.0, where it shows every option available. It's just a turn on turn off setup, right? So when you first build it and open it and connect it, like the, you can just clearly see, you know, you can set a train limit, read train contents, read stop train, read train count. Uh, and this is, you know, obviously has to do with stations specifically here. Uh, but I mean, this is a station essentially, but, uh, but yeah, it just shows it already there, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then we go down and, uh, they, they go more into that, you know, they can learn from their mistakes. So circuit slots show the values. Uh, this one, uh, this is one of the features that they basically can't imagine living without anymore. I would consider most of the things coming in 2.0 to be the case, uh, quality of life wise, at least. And uh, it it shows you the, the count on the signal, like in the box here. So normally, if you wanted to see that you would have to, you know, hook it up to a power pole and, and see that but but here, you can see like for the steel or the brick or any of these, it shows you the actual count of it which is really, really nice. And it just, you know, very simple change, but this, this type of quality of life stuff just clears things up, makes it less confusing overall, which is really good. So I'm a fan of both of these changes. Uh, really, really like both these. And uh, yeah, they just say, you know, makes it super simple when setting up uh, a condition to know what ballpark of value you need to set it. And it gives immediate feedback. Then we go into Decider Combinator 2.0. So the decider combinator is, um, you know, it basically only has, like you can only do one thing at a time currently. Uh, it, its function is to help log uh, make logical decisions. For instance, if iron plate is greater than 10, turn on a lamp. But yeah, like I said, it can only do one thing at a time. However, in practice, it, uh, it made its use in even slightly more complex situations cumbersome. So. Like if you want to do something more complicated, such as, you know, turn on a lamp when the chest has multiple different conditions met, like 100 steel, 200 copper, 10 coal, you would need multiple combinators, which isn't great. Not the worst thing, but it could be simpler. So uh, they felt that while simplicity is good, uh, if it was too simple, you know, that could actually make things bad because it would make... Uh, you know, basic setups sometimes more complicated than they need to be, and it's also awkward trying to troubleshoot some circuit setups, uh, opening all the different deciders to see what's happening and where it went wrong. So they decided to add uh, a few key things to the decider combinator. So they just reworked it. Uh, multiple conditions with and or combinations, quick visual representation of the signal state, a uh, selection of input between red and green wires. This is huge because currently if you have red and green wires going in, uh, it basically combines the signals together is my understanding. Again, I'm very bad at combinators and circuit logic stuff in the game. So uh, 
apologies if I get some of this wrong, but but this is basically my understanding is is when you hook a red and green wire both to a combinator uh, on the input or output, like like together on the same thing, um, on the same input or the same output, it uh, it combines them together. And then multiple outputs, which is really nice. So we can see a GUI example here where you can see the condition. They have uh, the selection for red and green here for the wires. And then, you know, you can you can go even further with that. So like if green circuits are more than zero uh, and red circuits are more than zero or uh, electric furnaces, I think this is greater. This is equal or not equal to A. <laughs> Like I said, I, <laughs> this is already confusing me, but but you can basically see here and then outputs, uh, you get these outputs, input signals you can see here, which is really nice to just visually see the input signals and then you can see the output signals here. Uh, so this is again, just simplifies everything and uh, is a really nice change. Uh, and then lastly, and this is also super helpful. This is actually maybe the biggest thing because uh, it, you know, there's a saying that like a picture's worth a thousand words, but that isn't always the case in, in situations like this, where when there is no written description of something and you just have to base off of the visuals sometimes, um, that can be really hard. Uh, so what they've done is basically added descriptions for all combinators. So they now add a custom description field to all combinators. Uh, this makes it easy to remember what the combinator is doing, how it works or such, and to store in blueprints, and so it'll be uh, invaluable for copying someone else's. So this is, yeah, so this is a really great example. If someone else makes a combinator setup to do, you know, whatever, maybe like a safe train crossing or a light show or counting science pack uh, levels showing uh, shown on lights or, or even more complicated, uh, instead of downloading it and just trying to guess what the heck's going on, um, if the person wants to when they make it, they can just add descriptions to every combinator. You know, it may be some work, but they can add them. And then it can be, I think, much more clear what's actually happening. So you can see here, they say if uh, power common or not common air, uh, accumulator power drops below 20%, this will kick on emergency steam power with the uh, check mark signal. And then also it will signal the programmable speaker to send an alert so we know what's happening. Uh, so again, this is just so nice. You can add this, you know, just like you can in, in, uh, general blueprints, but you can actually add it on the combinator itself now, which is really great. And then we go to, I think the last thing for uh, arithmetic combinators is, or arithmetic is once we get used to the input output slots of the new decider, we decided that we missed it on uh, this one. And so we added it there too and made it a side by side layout again. So very simple, but you can see all your input signals, you can see all your output signals. Uh, it just makes things less kind of fuzzy and, and unclear as to what exactly is happening. It's just right there in front of you. It's, it's really nice. Uh, and, you know, even for me, who's uh, really bad with this stuff, it's it's very clear we're taking basically all the inputs, multiplying them by negative two, and you can see the results here. And this also helps verify that you're actually doing things correctly because, you know, if your intention was to multiply all those by negative two, but for some reason you did something wrong and this is not outputting what it should be. So like, for example, if this was uh, 40 and if these weren't negatives, well, then maybe you forgot the negative or, I mean, I know that's super simple, but generally speaking, like just seeing this can be a really good verification that you actually did what you were intending to do. And if not, maybe a more clear idea of what's happening. And then lastly, we have a new combinator. Now this one is really interesting. Uh, in my group with uh, some, uh, some some longtime players who, who are mods on my stream and stuff uh, and, and make my mods for me, there was a very lengthy discussion on the use case of this last combinator. And it seems like it's maybe super niche or maybe it's just uh, this is prep for a future Friday facts. You know how they they've done so far where they like give us something that maybe isn't complete, but it ties in to a more complete Friday facts in the futures is what this might be. Uh, but I would love to hear from you guys below uh, in the comments, like some ideas you have for for this combinator and, and some good use cases for this. So this is a selector combinator. They hinted at a new one. 
uh, a few times before. And uh, apparently there was a, a thread on Reddit with a bunch of guesses. I don't think I saw that, but yeah, you can check it out if you want. They say this post from uh, Kulinda uh, from Reddit seems to be the closest guess, so congratulations on winning the guessing game. Uh, the primary function of this combinator was motivi motivated by a specific operation, which was a very cumbersome, which was very cumbersome to do and practically impossible to do in a generic way. The function is indexing signals to process them one by one uh, with some additional logic. So for example, if you have a list of needed materials, you can use the selector combinator to index the first item, another to index the second item, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is, I mean, you can see the GUI here. So you select input, sort ascending, sort descending, which, so this is really nice. Count inputs, random, uh, we see you can do stack size, raw capacity, quality transfer, and uh, so various, basically it has uh, some specific uses and modes which are still subject to change. Uh, various modes include uh, output the signal at a given, at the given index sorted from biggest to smallest or vice versa. Output the count of input signals. Output a random signal from the inputs with a custom update interval. So this is really interesting. I don't quite know what this would be used for, but obviously they have something in mind. Uh, output the stack size of the input item. This I can see being very useful. Uh, output the rocket capacity of the input item. Uh, useful for space age logistics. Transfer the quality of an input signal. More on that another day perhaps. So interesting that you can also transfer the quality of an input signal. Um, so basically some of these could have been solved with a custom signal in other places like a stack size signal for arith uh, it's just arith arithmetic, I think it's arithmetic, right? Combinator, I'm also dyslexic. So uh, arithmetic combinator to output the stack size items, but we decided to go this way for cleanliness of design and better discoverability. Since the scope of the selector combinator is quite broad, there's also room for further functions we could give it. If you have some ideas, we would welcome them. Uh, so, so yeah, this is really interesting. Again, I don't, I don't really know exactly what this would be used for, but there is more circuit network stuff to come and just more things you can do with it. You know, they say that, uh, since the side of combinators, it ability to specify from which wires it should read is very nice. We plan to make more improvements in this direction. Other places, there are new, th uh, things, uh, that, uh, use the circuit network basically in the expansion too, you know, that they maybe haven't revealed. So yeah, it will be really interesting to see how people use this. And I'd love to hear your ideas below on, on, uh, like, like what this could be used for. So the main ones I see that could be really good would be, uh, the stack size, the rocket capacity, maybe something of quality. Um, not 100% sure like exactly how that will even work, but I uh, I, can, I can definitely see some of this being useful. The others, not, not so sure yet, but that's gonna do it for this one. I know like circuit stuff is definitely not for everyone. It's usually not really for me either, as you can probably tell by just watching this video uh, that I, I do struggle with it, but I think this will make it a lot more approachable. I think all these features are, are really good and just make things more clear, more easy to understand and work with, and allow you to just do more things, which is, you know, really good. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, again, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please leave your thoughts below uh, with any of this. And uh, again, I apologize for any for mispronunciations and uh, saying things wrong that <laughs> don't work a certain way. Uh, but but yeah, I hope you got the gist of this and uh, it will be really interesting to see kind of where this progresses with future Friday Facts. But if you did enjoy, a like is appreciated. And if you're new, welcome. Feel free to subscribe to keep up with future content. And uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.